Good morning, everyone. Welcome to church. We're glad you are here, here physically, also people online. Welcome. It's a great day to worship. This is indeed the, the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us uh, pray together. Gracious God, we thank you for this morning, a morning that we could celebrate our graduates, a time that we could gather to worship you and to lift your name. Bless this time that we have together. May your spirit flow freely among us to move us, to turn our hearts and our minds towards you. We pray, Lord, all these things in Christ's name. Amen. I invite you to stand, sit, stand on your head, worship <laughs> together. <laughs> There's revival and it's spreading like a wildfire in my heart. Sunday morning, hallelujah, and it's lasting all week long. Can you hear it? Can you feel it? It's the rhythm of the gospel song. Won't you choose it? You can't lose it. There ain't nothing, there ain't nothing gonna steal my joy. I got an old church choir singing in my soul. I got a sweet salvation and it's beautiful. I've got a heart overflowing cause I've been restored. There ain't nothing gonna steal my joy. No, there ain't nothing gonna steal my joy when the that I wander turn to mountains that I can't climb you are with me you never leave me there ain't nothing there ain't nothing gonna steal my forgiven, drowning out the Amazon rain, the song of Asian believers filled with God's holy fire, every tribe, every tongue, every nation, a love song born of a grateful choir. Above the four winds, caught up in the heavenly sound. Let praises echo from the towers of cathedrals to the faithful gathered underground. Of all the songs sung from the dawn of creation, no ring man to persist. Of all the bells rung from a thousand steeples, none rings truer than this. All right, choir, sing it out. It's all God's children singing glory, glory. Just 
Cause all the powers of darkness can't drown out a single word. Sing that again, all the powers of darkness. And all the powers of darkness tremble at what they just heard. of darkness can't drown out a single word. All God's children are singing glory. It's all God's children singing glory, glory. May the peace of Christ be with you. Turn to your neighbors, wave, people online, drop a like, leave a comment, let us know you are with us today. All right. Kids, it's time for ping. So let's see what ping. Is. Hello, ping. There we go. Hey there, kids. Hi, Pastor Mark. Hi, ping. Why are you up in a tree? I'm here with my friend, Edith the Eagle. <laughs> we hear that there are some people who just graduated high school, and so we wanted to give them and the kids a special message. Well, that's very thoughtful of you, Ping and Edith. What's your message? Well, this message is for when times get a little tough because they are entering the world now and life can sometimes get you that down. That's true. Whether they're going off to college or getting a job or whatever, Sometimes life can be difficult. And we've experienced that this past year with COVID, huh? We sure have. The Bible says that even youth will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. That's from Isaiah 40, 30. That's true. You might be young and strong, but there are times when you, we all grow tired and exhausted. But what else does the Bible say, King? Aha! That's where Edith comes in. The Bible says, But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not be faint. Ah, I see. Edith the eagle is here to show us what it looks like to mount up on wings like eagles when the Lord renews our strength and we wait on him. Yep, Eva soars high in the sky with her powerful wings. Well, let's see it, Edith. Why don't you take Ping up for a ride? What? Wait! No, wait! Wait! I'm afraid of heights. No, wait! Wait! Ah! Oh, I can't bear to look. I don't want to look. Well, maybe if I took a peek. Hey, this isn't half bad. I'm, I'm soaring. Look, kids, I'm flying. I'm soaring on wings like eagles. Wow, Ping, that looks amazing. This is awesome. This is what it's like to trust in the Lord. Boy, let's keep going, Edith. Let's soar to new heights. 
Congratulations, graduates! You can soar to new heights, too! Remember, trust in the Lord! See you next week, kids! Bye! Wow, that is amazing. When we trust in the Lord, He can help us through hey there, kid. times. He helps us mount up on wings like eagles. And so we we are excited for our graduates as well. So let us let us pray. Dear God, help us to trust in you and to wait on you knowing that you help us through tough times and you enable us to soar on wings like eagles. We thank you and we pray in Christ's name and all God's children said, amen. Amen. All right, kids. Today is a Nikki Sams will be leading you guys, so follow her back to the, the Sunday school room. Well, once again, good morning, everyone. There are just a couple things I'd like to highlight. Um, first of all is that we're doing coffee hour again, and so there's a sign-up sheet in the coffee hour room on the bulletin board, and so if you would like to um, come in and help with the coffee hour, um, provide a snack and get the coffee going, uh, please sign up on that bulletin board. Uh, the other sign up that we have is for VBS snacks. VBS is just right around the corner. It starts on the 21st. And so uh, there's a sign up sheet for helping with bringing in things for snacks. And um, they actually need to be here by next Sunday. So if you would uh, like to provide uh, one of the items there or uh, part of the items there, uh, please uh, sign up on that sheet and bring your um, contribution in by uh, next Sunday. That would be awesome. Um, and then later today, we are celebrating our graduates. And so uh, we will do that later in the, the service. Uh, for prayer requests, uh, just a couple of them. Please remember uh, Gary Durpo in your prayers. He's back home and he is um, recovering there. He had a, a mini stroke. And so uh, um, Jason tells me that he needs to make some lifestyle changes to, uh, to help with that. Um, pray for, keep on praying for uh, Hiawatha. Uh, they lost a teacher, the music teacher, David Ingersoll, uh, passed away suddenly a couple weeks couple weeks ago now and so please uh, please keep his family in your prayers and then also pray for a young couple who is uh, making decisions regarding a, a pregnancy and so please uh, keep them in your prayer as well and they uh, need some guidance and some wisdom on, on uh, future things so please pray for them are there any other joys or concerns yes yes please So prayers for Tara as she travels with horses in the light of this accident that had happened, uh, that she makes it to Oklahoma safely and back. And back. Okay. Any other joys or concerns? Tanya. Michael is going for surgery tomorrow, and so prayers for him. Is, and for Tanya's dad, who's having uh, treatment uh, tomorrow as well. So, anyone else? 
Well, let us join together in prayer. God, we thank you for this time that we could um, come before you and to lift up uh, the people that we love and we care about. We thank you that we could come together as the church family and share with one another the, the things that concern us, the things that we're joyful for, but also the things that um, we need prayer for. And so we come uh, before you as one body, as one voice lifting up these prayers to you. We ask that you would continue to be with Gary as he recovers from his mini stroke. We pray, Lord, that you continue to be healing his body and that you would give him encouragement and that you would be um, helping him to do the things that he needs to do to uh, remain healthy and, and to get healthy, Lord. So be with him, be with Fran as they, uh, as they uh, recover from this, Lord. We pray for uh, the family of Mr. Ingersoll. We pray, Lord, that you would um, be consoling them at, at, at his passing that uh, you'd be giving them encouragement and strength, that you would show them your love, um, and that you would bless them, Lord. We pray, Lord, for uh, this couple who is expecting a child. We ask, Lord, that you would um, give them wisdom and give them uh, faith in you, that uh, whatever uh, happens, they could trust in you and that they can uh, rely upon you to provide and help them to make uh, uh, wise decisions. I pray that you would uh, be with this, this child, and that you would be helping them to grow and to uh, develop and to be strong, Lord. Bless the, the baby and the mom as, as the pregnancy continues. We pray, Lord, that you'd be with uh, Tara, that you would be watching over her, as she travels with horses, we pray, Lord, that you would uh, open the, the path for her to uh, get to Oklahoma and back safely, and that you would be protecting her and protecting her on the road, Lord. Be with Michael as he undergoes surgery, Lord. Give him encouragement. Keep him healthy and strong, and even now, um, helping him to uh, heal from, um, from the surgery, help him to have the... the the strength in his step, Lord, to, to recover and to uh, remain strong and to be with, uh, and be with uh, Tanya's father as he undergoes a treatment, that you would uh, continue to watch over him and his life, that uh, the things will go well for this treatment and that you would bring him, Lord, to, to health. And so we lift up all these things, all these prayers to you. We lift up all these people that we care about. And we lift up also those who are upon our hearts, Lord, that are upon our lips, that you know our requests even before we could say them, and that you are actively at work answering uh, these prayers that we have. So with trust and with faith, we pray all these things. In the name of Christ Jesus, our Lord, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Please remember that the offering box is in the back and you could give online or send in your check as well. So thank you. I can see that my hands are trembling. I can see that my legs are weak. I can see that my head is spinning, but I will overcome. And I know that my heart is hurting, and I know that my soul it aches, and I know that it seems I'm failing, but I will overcome. Oh Lord, I'm strong. 
never needed it so much because all I want is you yes all I want is you all I want is you just crowd to God all I want is you because all I want is you Today's scripture reading comes from Romans chapter 11, verses 1 through 12. Romans 11, 1 through 12. I ask then, has God rejected his people? By no means. I myself am an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham, a member of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not rejected his people whom he foreknew. Do you not know what the scripture says of Elijah, how he pleaded with God against Israel? Lord, they have killed your prophets. They have demolished your altars. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life. But what is the divine reply to him? I have kept for myself 7,000 who have not bowed the knee to Baal. So too, at the present time, there is a remnant chosen by grace. But if it is by grace, it is no longer on the basis of works. Otherwise, grace would no longer be grace. What then? Israel failed to obtain what it was seeking. The elect obtained it, but the rest were hardened. As it is written, God gave them a sluggish spirit, eyes that would not see, and ears that would not hear down to this very day. And David says, let their table become a snare and a trap, a stumbling block 
and of retribution for them. Let their eyes be darkened so that they cannot see and keep their backs forever bent. So I ask, have they stumbled so as to fall? By no means. But through their stumbling, salvation has come to the Gentiles so as to make Israel jealous. Now if their stumbling means riches for the world, and if their defeat means riches for Gentiles, how much more will their full inclusion mean? Romans 11, 1 through 12. And let us pray. Lord, I pray that you would calm our hearts and calm our minds, calm our beings, so that we, be, we may be ready and open to hear your word for us this morning. Help us to be challenged by it and to be transformed by it. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable and pleasing to you, O Lord, our rock and redeemer. Amen. So when I graduated high school, I left with the idea of going to the University of Washington to become a doctor or something to do with the medical field. About my sophomore year, I decided to pursue going to a physical therapy school. I started volunteering at the hospital to get some experience and I started uh, the prerequisites uh, coursework and I applied and I got rejected. That was okay, I still had a year or two left and there's only like, don't remember, 18, 20 spots. So I worked on applying for next year and I did. And I got waitlisted and then rejected. And that kind of threw me for a loop. I was graduating with a degree in biology. I didn't have anything lined up at that point I was left a little anxious, a little stressed out, but also disappointed, especially since this was something I was working toward. And I prayed for over the past year or so, few years, but then things started falling into place. My boss in the lab that I was working at graciously hired me on as a full-time tech. And I worked there for seven years. And in that time, I got married had a kid. Also in that time, I was able to uh, do youth ministry and go on mission trips. And I felt that call uh, to enter into full-time ministry. Then I went off to seminary, then to South Dakota, and finally here I am in Othello, Washington. Yay. <laughs> Sometimes I wonder though, how life would be different if I got into PT school? Would I have uh, the time to get involved with ministry? Would I still feel the call to, uh, to seminary? And would I still be standing here in front of you all in, in Othello, Washington? And would my, my faith be the same? But another part of me in thinking about um, this passage day, part of me wonders about the people who got into physical therapy school. Was there a special reason for them to get in and not me? How have they made an impact in the lives of the people that they are treating? Now understand that my humble story about not getting into physical therapy school pales in comparison to the more serious topic that Paul is discussing about what happens with the Jews and the Gentiles 
regarding the gospel and salvation. However, one of the lessons that I'm drawing out of this passage is the idea of failure or stumbling may not necessarily be a bad thing. That perhaps there is some way in which God can use stumbling for a greater purpose in achieving God's goals. As I have noted before in previous sermons, the Jews rejecting Jesus as Messiah was very troubling for Paul. He spent these middle chapters of Romans, chapters uh, 9, 10, and now 11, trying to reason through God's plan concerning the Jews. After all, as Paul already stated, that the Jews are the recipients of the covenants, of the promises, of the law, and through the Jews comes the Messiah, Jesus Christ. So with the Jews rejecting the gospel of Jesus, does that mean that God has rejected his people? And that's the question that Paul begins with. Has God rejected his people? And to answer that question, Paul points directly to himself. He traces his Israelite lineage, being from the tribe of Benjamin, and thus a descendant of Abraham himself. He says he's a Hebrew of Hebrews, very much a Jew. God has not rejected him, but instead he has called him to ministry, to proclaim the gospel to the Gentiles. And he's only one of several people we meet in the, in the New Testament, Jewish people, who have accepted Jesus as Messiah. The disciples, all of them were Jews. Some of his traveling com companions were Jews. Timothy, his protege, his ministry partners, Priscilla and Aquila, all were Jews. God has not rejected the Jews. What Paul is getting at is this idea of a remnant. One of the things that Denise does when we go shopping, especially when she was making masks during the pandemic, was to go to the fabric section and look at the remnants. Remnants are basically leftovers from the bolt of cloth that are too small to do anything with except for maybe make a face mask. So they take the remnant of the bolt, specially price it, and put it in the remnant basket for people to buy if they're doing a smaller project. I'm sure Jim Logan could tell us what a remnant is regard, regarding carpets, that it's not enough carpet to, to, uh, to uh, put, on a, put in a room, but maybe some other project can use this leftover piece of carpet for a project or, or whatnot. The idea of the remnant of Israel is that there is a small portion of the people of God who have not turned away from God and who have stayed, stayed true to him. The rest of the people, let's say, have already been bought off by the false gods and idols. And what's left on the bolt is the remnant, the people who have remained faithful to God. Paul uses the story of Elijah and the prophets of Baal, for he believes that there's no one left because all the prophets went to Baal except himself. There's no one left except him. However, God assures Elijah that he has kept for himself 7,000 people who have not bowed down and worshiped Baal. God will use the remnant to build up his people once again, a pe people who, who is faithful to God. And Paul says that God has a remnant now. Even though most of the Jews have rejected Jesus as Messiah, God has a remnant people who have remained faithful and have not rejected Jesus. And this is important because it is through the remnant that God is keeping his promises to his people. The rest of the people have rejected Christ. And we come back to that idea of God hardening their hearts. That they have already rejected them. 
And God is just letting them do what they please. He gave them over to the lusts of their hearts, and they became futile in their thinking, and in their senseless minds were darkened, as he says in Romans 1.21. And continue on, continuing on, he says, Paul says, and since they did not see fit to acknowledge God, God gave them to a debased mind and to things that should not be done. They were filled with every kind of wickedness, evil, uh, covetousness, malice, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, craftiness. They were gossips, slanderers, God-haters, insolent, haughty, boastful, inventors of evil, rebellious towards parents, foolish, faithless, heartless, and ruthless. That's a, that sounds a lot like what Paul says when he quotes uh, Deuteronomy and Isaiah, and also from David, in verses eight through uh, verses eight through ten, he says, "God gave them a sluggish spirit, eyes that would not see, and ears that would not hear, down to that down to this very day." And David says, "Let their table become a snare and a trap, a stumbling block, a retribution for them. Let their eyes be darkened so that they cannot see, and their." and keep their backs bent forever. That their eyes are darkened, that their ears are closed up, because they have turned their minds and their hearts away from God, and they've become rebellious and enemies of God. Peter puts uh, the Jews' rejection of Christ this way. He says, to you then who believe, he is precious, but to those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected have become the very head of the corner and a stone that makes them stumble, a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word and they were destined to do as they were destined to do. So they rejected Christ and stumbled upon the gospel. And that stumbling and rejection opened the doors for the Gentiles to hear and receive the gospel. They received salvation. Paul says, so I ask, have they stumbled so, so as to fail? Uh, sorry. They stumbled so as to fall. By no means, but through their stumbling, salvation has come to the Gentiles so as to make Israel jealous. So the Jews wouldn't hear the gospel. It was blasphemous in their ears. So with the Jews not wanting to hear the gospel, where else could the gospel go but to the Gentiles? And the Gentiles received it, and salvation came to them. Paul asks if their stumbling, stumbling will result in their fall or the complete ruin or ir irrevocably fall away from God. But Paul says the answer is a resounding no. Paul hopes that the Gentiles receiving the, receiving the gospel will make Israel jealous. He hopes that in seeing the Gentiles receiving the riches of God's grace, that that will help them to see what they are missing out so that they too might one day receive Jesus as Messiah. Paul continues to say, now, if their stumbling means riches for the world and their defeat means riches for Gentiles, how much more will, will their full inclusion mean? Paul says that if in their defeat, that meaning that Israel in their state of simply being a remnant, being reduced down to just the scrap of, of, of material left over, if that means that the Gentiles can receive God, how much greater will it be when that remnant once again grows to the fullness of the people of God that the Jews were meant to be? Paul looks forward to the day when the Jews will no longer just be a handful, a minority of the believers, but take a prominent place as, as brothers and sisters in the body of Christ. And how wonderful that would be.
there are a couple of things to learn from this. First, that we have a responsibility that perhaps we don't take seriously enough. We've been entrusted with the gospel of Christ. It was rejected by the Jews. And now we have been given the opportunity to hear the gospel and to be saved. And so not to take it for granted. Not to, um, not to just um, think it's there for the taking. That it's always going to be there. Not to take it for granted, but to live it out and to share it. The Jews rejected it. And so God turned to someone else. The Jews didn't take it seriously. And God took the message to someone else. What if we don't take it seriously? If, what if we don't live it out? Maybe God will just go to the least of these. The people we least expect to receive it. And they receive it. So don't take it for granted. But live it out and share it. But the second thing that I want to take from this is that God plays the long game. We are very focused in the immediate, in the here and now. And not, that's not to say that God isn't in the immediate and in the here and now, but we also need to think of the long term. It was way back in Genesis when human, humanity fell. And it was only until Matthew when God sends the Savior. That's the long term. And it's been 2,000 years since that Jesus, that we're still waiting for Jesus to return. Centuries and centuries upon thousands of years, God playing the long game, being patient with us, waiting for us. That's part of the sharing the gospel, waiting for us to share the gospel. But also, you know, the immediate is only a blip or a blink of the eye in terms of the way that God works. And so we are encouraged to wait on the Lord because he does play the long game. Psalm 27, 13 and 14 says, I believe that I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. That even though we may be walking in the valley of the shadow of death, we have that hope. We have that belief that I believe that I shall see the goodness of the Lord of the land, in the land of the living. That in the wasteland of COVID, let's say, that we believe that we shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. That through our stumbling and through our falling, that that doesn't mean the end of all things. That through our stumbles and through our fall, maybe God has something better in mind. Maybe God has something for his purpose in mind. And then we also have the verse from Ping today. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not be faint. That in the midst of our failures, those in our, our falling, that we wait on the Lord. And as we wait and trust in him, he will give us strength. He will help us to soar on wings like eagles. Shall run and not be weary. Walk and not be faint. And I think that's my prayer for the graduates. That we may, that you may stumble along the way. There'll be heartache. 
there'll be struggles. The truth is God hasn't given up on anyone because he is indeed a God of grace and God of love. And that we take a look at our struggles in terms of the long game. How is this changing our uh, trajectory in life? How can we work around it? How does this, is God telling me that through these difficulties that he does have something better in mind? I wish I could go back and tell, tell my sophomore college year self that you're going to go through some difficult times, but it's worth it because your trajectory is going to go this way. And you'll be standing in front of a group of wonderful people in Othello, Washington, sharing, sharing the good news with them. Granted, if I did that, then my faith would be different because I'd have that in mind. But God plays that long game. And who knows what these things that crop up in your life is there for God's purpose and for his glory. We pray, please pray with me. God, help us to have faith to simply wait on you. And as we see struggles in life, as we um, face them, Help us to see the big picture in mind. Help us to understand that you have uh, greater things in mind. Help us to, to uh, look at the world through your lenses and to trust that you are taking us in places where you want us or you desire us to be. Help us to have faith and help us to wait. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. So we come to a time to celebrate our graduates. And we have one graduate here. <laughs> and you know, that's, that's, um, that's kind of who we are in a lot of ways that our Wednesday program reaches out to not just the kids who show up on Wednesday or on Sundays, but to the community at large, where, you know, a lot of these people you read through and, well, who are they? Well, they may not come here on Sundays. They may go to a different church on Sundays. Their family might not even come to church, but they are here on Wednesdays. And I think that's a a powerful ministry that we have as as the church family that they feel welcomed to come on Wednesdays. Maybe they feel a little uncomfortable on Sundays, but on Wednesday they could feel a part of this family here. And so that's why it's important for us to honor graduates, whether they're here or not. All of them will get a, a beautiful blanket, and so um, and we'll pray for them, and we'll we'll. Uh, We'll give thanks for them. And so for graduating, we have, um, if you look in your list, we have Bo Gonzalez, Logan Hollenbeck, we've seen here, um, Molly Jensen, Brandon Kutz, Hallie Paris. I know Hallie is doing some training. She's going to be a full-time counselor up at um, Tall Timber. And so we've been supporting her going through tall timber. And so that's, um, you know, over the years, and she tried to do this leadership thing last year, but then COVID hit. So it was great to see that she's able to go up there and be a counselor. So we have Hallie, uh, James Shank, uh, Alexandria Terayama, and Jess Van Landingham. And so I invite Lexi to come up. <laughs> And I'm sure we'll get these blankets to them. Turn this over slow. 
So Alexei, I'm going to put you on the spot here. Is this muted? <laughs> so the question is, what are you going to do next? Do you have a school? What is your field that you're going to try to study? Um, I'm going to Bellevue College and hopefully studying design. Thank you. So we're going to, we're, we are going to pray for not just Lexi, but for all these graduates, I invite you to raise your hand up. You could pray for Lexi. You could raise it up, and your prayers will go to wherever our graduates are, and we'll bless them. And so let us pray. God, we thank you for the, the class of 2021, that they have gone through the last years of high school virtually and through some difficult times, but you have led them and you have guided them. And we thank you, Lord, for the achievements that they have made, the ways that you have blessed their academic and social lives. And we ask, Lord, that you'll continue to be walking with them, that you will lead them into the future, wherever they may be going, whether it's to school or to college or, or to uh, work. We pray, Lord, that you would um, be speaking to them, that you'd be blessing them, that you'd be guiding them in the ways that you would have them to be, that you would help them to sense uh, your calling in life, and that they would seek that out, and that they would find, indeed, that calling that you have placed upon their lives and upon their hearts. Bless them, Lord. Watch over them. Help them, Lord, to... Uh, to walk a path that is faithful to you as you lead them forward. We pray this all in the name of Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Congratulations. I could hug you because you're in my bubble. <laughs> oh. Bonk. <laughs> so remember to graduate, congratulate our graduates when you see them. There's a special treat for the graduates that um, spiritual growth have made up. Take a look at them. They're pretty neat. And let us worship. Yeah. This is my cry. And this is my song. You are my guiding light when the way is unknown. When these sunny skies turn shades of gray, I'll stay close by your side as you lead the way. Jesus lead on, I will follow. Jesus lead on, let your love light the way. Jesus lead on, I will follow. Jesus lead on. Hear now this cry. Hear now this song. You are the guiding light for this journey I'm on. When my vision is clouded by the wind and the rain, I'll stay close by your side as you lead the way. Jesus, lead on. Jesus, lead on, I will follow. Jesus, lead on, let your love light the way. Jesus, lead on, I will follow. Jesus, lead on. One more time, so the chorus. 
Jesus, lead on our follow. Jesus, lead on, let your love light the way. Jesus, lead on, I will follow. Jesus, lead on. Follow Christ. He's leading the young and the old. Trust and wait upon him. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord smile upon you and give you peace. And all God's people said, amen. Amen. Hear now this cry, hear now this song, you are the guide in life for this journey I'm on, when my vision is clouded, I the wind and the 